Welcome back to another edition of the Calm Conversation on WCTV, a YouTube series where we dive into the career path and time in the Department of Communication for our Waynesburg University students, professors, and alumni. I'm pleased to be joined today by a member of our Waynesburg University Department of Communication alumni, Brennan McCall, a 2018 graduate of Waynesburg University. Brennan, I appreciate you taking the time. The drive to get here today was not, I'm sure, super it's short. It's a little for you. bit about two hours from Hopedale, Ohio, which is where I currently live. Um, but uh, it's it's fine. You're worth it. <laughs> I appreciate it, Brennan. You're uh, you're uh, a good guy, and you're uh, deep, deeply molded into all of our hearts here. So oh, well, thank I, you. I appreciate, I appreciate that. you taking the time. <laughs> Um, this is probably the biggest uh, question I have for you. Who do you think your, was your biggest influence in the department while you were here? Well, that's kind of an easy one. Um, when I first started as a freshman, uh, there I always pinpointed um, four major people uh, who have influenced my, my steps in, in the Department of Communication here at Waynesburg. Um, when I first started as my first semester as a freshman, of course, I did all the normal stuff you would do. You would go to all the meetings and hang out with everybody, talk to PR and talk to the newspaper and talk to TV radio. Um, and I remember I wanted to do more toward the TV radio side. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, I thought that radio um, felt more fun to me, felt more loose. I remember whenever Anthony Kahn was running CTV at the time, he was much more professional, a lot more polished. And for whatever reason, as a freshman in my first semester in the fall, I thought that I thought that radio was more fun at, at that point. So I was leaning more, a little more toward radio. And then about the spring semester rolled around, and, and Anthony kind of walked up to me. He's like, "Hey, you know, uh, we got this the show that we want to help you produce, or, or that, that one that one produced." And me and a kid named Zach Yonker at the time, um, Zach had uh, wanted to start this up, but he didn't want to do it by himself. So Zach is like, hey man, can you help me out with this? I said, sure. And it was the buzz. So uh, we did that first semester, and by the, by the time my sophomore year rolled around, uh, Zach had then switched from being a comm major to an English major. So he wasn't involved in the TV in, you know, anymore. So it was really just me doing that. So I think it was, it was Zach pushing me to get involved in TV to, to, to begin with was really what helped me move on. Um, and that's what kind of what got me involved in WCTV pretty easily. Um, and on top of that, next person I would think would probably be Sean Mead. Um, Sean, I graduated with Sean. Uh, he's you know, real tall, redhead, you know, everybody knows who he is. He's, he, he knows everybody on campus, I swear. Um, but he really helped push me to get more involved in uh, the high school football aspect. Um, with, with, with Channel 4 in Pittsburgh. And uh, it was more time, it was dedicating basically your entire Friday evening to going out and shooting football. Mm -hmm. And so as a sophomore, I was a little bit reluctant to do that because I didn't want to give up my time. I was taking, you know, 16, 17, 18 credits and I didn't want to dedicate that amount of time. You know, it's like Friday night, I want to hang out and just chill. Um, but it ended up paying it was very beneficial for me to do that and get that experience with shooting football later on. Next person uh, is, I mentioned him before, Anthony Kahn. I think he was a huge influence on, on me. Um, whenever he graduated, he, was, he, had, he had been the CTV's general manager for two years, his sophomore, junior year. And when I went into my junior year, he had already graduated. So there needed to be somebody else to kind of take the helm. And he was the one who really pushed me to, to, to apply for it, and I was blessed enough to get it. So there was that. And also, too, uh, Melinda Roeder was, was also a huge influence on me. Whenever I first started as, as, as a GM my junior year, she was kind of just starting um, teaching here at Waynesburg. And, uh, you know, I was able to lean on her a lot and, you know, uh, lean on her for a lot of different things, some problems I was having, stuff like that. So it was, I think those four people, Jack Yalko, Sean Mead, Anthony Kahn and Melinda Roeder, I think I would, I would probably you know, put all that on, on those four people. So you currently work at WTOV in Steubenville, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. How much do you think your, what you gathered at Waynesburg helped to uh, further your career and allow you to do some of the activities you do there? Well, sure. I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, I guess as far as the, the skill sets, um, I think learning how to run a camera with WCTV, learning how to run cameras for the Windsor University Sports Network, I think that uh, was a tremendous help because um, when I first had gotten hired at TOV, 
Um, we, they, they, their news cameras were the JVC 710. And whenever I was here, our only HD cameras at the time were, was the JVC 710. So when I first got hired, I was like, oh, I use that a bunch of times, yeah. you know, to shoot football and do stuff for, for our, our campus TV station. So, but I think that those tangible skills you learn um, really translate well to the two, um, you know, working uh, in, in in, in the workforce in the TV industry. Um, I thought it was a pretty seamless transition from doing that. And also too, um, when I became uh, uh, the, the, the GM of, of the campus TV station, I taught me other skills too, like how to communicate with people, um, how to send out emails. And I know that sounds you know, kind of silly, but it really is, it really is, is serious. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people that are our age and older that can't send emails or can't communicate properly. People that are in management that can't communicate properly. You see that everywhere. So um, I, I think that those little life skills, workforce skills that I learned um, being the GM, plus all the tangible skills and hands-on education that I received through Waynesburg, through WCTV and Waynesburg University Sports Network, I think those two things really helped to make that, that transition to the workforce pretty seamless. You talked about how you were GM for your junior and senior year. How was that overall experience as the station general manager? Um, it, was, it was really fruitful. I really think it was fruitful. Um, when I first started as a junior, it was pretty scary, honestly, because you're going from somebody, because I, cause I, I mentioned I, I produced the buzz. I did that for a full year, all throughout all through my sophomore year. So really you're in charge of like maybe 10 people. Mm -hmm. um, and then going from that up to being the GM and you're in charge of- 50 suddenly. Yeah, all, you know, you're somewhere 50 people. And working with, with uh, university staff, university professors, uh, being involved in, in, in budget meetings, stuff like that. And you're dealing with potentially thousands of dollars at one point in time. It, it was pretty scary. So um, I felt like I was taking on a little bit too much early on. I was one of those people who just didn't really learn how to say no to people. Um, so I would say yes to like ESPN productions and doing sports and all this other stuff and trying to get together with the internship and taking 18 credits. So it was just a lot going on. And I learned very quickly that you can't give 100% of yourself to everything. Um, so I think that was my first problem right out of the gate and I learning through the things that I began to learn where to delegate my stuff and um, learn how to, you know, at some point during the day learning when to shut it off and coming back to it the next day. Um, so it was really just kind of the stress and time management problem I had to work through. But once I got all that down, um, things started to become a little bit easier. Um, I began to communicate better and I think that we, we really knocked a lot of stuff out and we were really kind of advancing and, and cleaning up our, our act together here and I think that it was, it was very fruitful and I think that that opened the door for me to get internships and uh, job experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know we recently had the Calm 3 to 1 fundraising mm -hmm. campaign to uh, get HD equipment in here. How cool is it as an alumni to come back, a member of our alumni and come back and see this new Cole HD equipment in the studio is a, from a, from the standpoint of a former GM. It was awesome. Um, I know when I know Melinda Roder and uh, we talked with, with Bill Molson a lot. We talked with with Richard Krause a lot um, about the potential for HD coming, and it seemed like more of a dream when I was a freshman. But as we kind of kept moving through, moving through, and as the years went by, it started to become more of a reality. And I was so excited when I, when I heard the news that we were finally getting HD and um, the university, I, I thought it was a great decision to, uh, to, to uh, raise the money and to, and to get the funding we needed to get HD because um, the, the, the stuff, I, I thought that, that as far as our education went for students here, um, the standard def was fine until it didn't work. And that was, that was the main issue, is that it, it started not to f work and started to fail on us. I know for you guys it was a huge challenge mm -hmm. uh, about, about a year or so ago when, when stuff just didn't seem to go right. So to have newer equipment here, to have better looking uh, products from this equipment, I, I think that that's, that's beneficial for, for the university, especially with getting students back. What is some advice you'd give to uh, an incoming freshman at Waynesburg as they come in and kind of explore their options on what to do? What's uh, some advice you'd tell them, maybe get involved with certain activities or something like that? Just to keep an open mind, um, I, I mentioned before how I thought that radio was the step I was going to take, but then you know, I, you know, I had a few people come into my life and say, hey, I think you should do this and do that. Listen to those people, listen to those things, and keep an open mind and, and, and try to find your niche. 
Um, you know, I, I was never into writing whenever I was here. I thought that, oh man, writing was boring. But here I am writing TV scripts every day. Um, it's those kind of things that you have to really keep an open mind with and, and just try to find what you're into, what you enjoy, and take every opportunity. You know, it, um, it, it's so easy to get wrapped up in, like, oh man, I'm so tired, I can't do this, I can't do that. Well, it's you versus all the other students here. It's you versus everybody at Kent State, WVU, Pitt, Point Park, all those areas, and as all the students are going to be graduating at the same time you can, you have to do what you can to separate yourself from the rest of that field. You were talking about how you need to write scripts every day. Yeah. How important is flexibility in the field to do a bunch of different things and oh try to God. do the best you can? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's so important. It really is. Um, the, the more you can do, what I found is the more marketable people are going to see you as. Um, when I first started this, this topical position, I, I didn't have much writing experience at all. And it was scary when I first started, but it took me being a news photog for a little while and being around reporters to kind of see what works and what doesn't. And you know, being able to be flexible is, is, is very, very important, especially in news, because it's constantly changing. Things can drop like that. You, know, you can be doing one story one day, and all of a sudden there's a car in a house on 4th Street, and you have to drop everything and leave because it's breaking news. You can't miss that. So it's important to be flexible. It's important to um, just make sure that your skills are sharpened up in, in all different areas because you never know what opportunity is going to you know, come up your way. At WT of E, you're a member of what has become a pretty awesome pipeline from Waynesburg yeah. to TOV. <laughs> we have guys like Paul Zalakar, Sam Hicks, and Zach Schnegg who have all had opportunities with them as well. How cool is it to be part of something like that? It's really cool. And and I mentioned cool, uh, or I mentioned about by Anthony Kahn. Um, he was the one who actually got me to TOV. Um, he, whenever he graduated here, he went off to be a TV reporter, which he still is today. Um, but uh, he came to me right before graduation um, last year, and he said, "Hey, you know, I, you know, you know what's your job out, out looking like?" I said, "I don't know." Like I, I applied to like 40 different places, didn't really hear back from anybody. Had like one interview line up for like a part-time position. I wanted something full-time. I wanted something some, somewhere close to home. He's like, "Well, we have this news photo position. You know, see if we can get you in there." And I think it was the day before graduation, the day after graduation or something, I had an interview um, scheduled lined up. And so long story short, I ended up getting there. But it, it was so cool to see me go there and then Zach Medevic show up and then Ian Barclay show up. And then you know, we have you know, Zalakar, Hicks, and Schnegg, all those guys come in for, for internships. Um, but it was, it's just really neat. And, and again, it goes to show how, how how much of an influence a Waynesburg student can have somewhere because I think once Anthony got there, our, our, their, their news director realized, hey, these Waynesburg kids, they're, they're something special, you know? So uh, it, it's just really neat to see that. It's almost like I didn't leave. <laughs> We're talking with Brennan McCall here on the Calm Conversation. A couple more conversations points before we let him go. A couple more questions for sure. you. Um, what do you think has been your biggest challenge in the field so far? The biggest challenge is um, that's Kind of a tough one. Um, I would probably think to keep things fresh uh, is probably the, the, the biggest challenge. Um, part of my job is to write teases and scripts every day and shoot things every day. Um, and I'm, I have anywhere between 14 and 20 dead deadlines every night. And it, it's so easy to get wrapped up in the same jargon, the same TV jargon over and over and over again, the same type of scripts. Um, and doing the same different things every day. And it's, it, it's so tough when you have that many deadlines and that many products you're putting out every day to try to make each one fresh. Um, and that's probably the biggest challenge. Um, that and trying to make something that's really, really boring sound interesting. And that's sometimes what I gotta do every day is, you know, hey, well, there's somebody, it could be some generic council meeting on the roads. Well, if that's our top story for the evening, I gotta find a way to try to make that interesting to the public. So. That's probably the most challenging thing is trying to keep things fresh and, and trying to keep on the ball uh, with what everybody else is doing. What do you think has been the most rewarding moment of your young career so far? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> that's a tough one. Well, I think there's been so many. Um, you know, I, I, I look back at my career at Waynesburg and I think that um, a lot of the productions we, we put out with Waynesburg University Sports Network, uh, because I was, I was really involved with, with a lot of my buddies, a lot of the kids I graduated with, we were all working together. And I think all of us working together, being able to put out something that we're proud of, I think that's probably the, the most rewarding 
uh, aspect of, of our uh, of our uh, of our careers of my career just because I'm a social guy I like being around people and uh, I think it, it was very rewarding to see all of us work together to put out something that we're proud of all right probably the deepest question coming up here okay if you could go back in time maybe five years ago and give advice to a younger version of yourself what do you think you'd say oh wow um, probably more in line to what I said earlier I mean um, I, I regret not getting involved earlier. I know one semester isn't that, that long, but I, I regret not jumping on, on the ball for, for TV a little bit earlier. Um, you know, it, it, I think that's what I would tell myself is don't hold back. Um, you know, just sitting in, in, my, in my room freshman year playing video games and Xbox all day, it's not gonna get me very far. So it, it's important to find your niche, find what you wanna get involved in. You know, get involved with people, talk to people, learn as many skills that, as you can, and you, know, you should turn out okay. Brennan, and I really appreciate you taking Mitch, the time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, and <laughs> thank you for taking the drive up here. Not a problem. We'll join you next time on the Calm Conversation where we talk to Waynesburg University students, professors, and alumni about their career path and time in the department. Stay tuned.